Recorded by Anthony Rizzo, Sydney, Australia. This was Australian soldiers, airmen, and sailors fighting. We did it all on our own at that stage. And I can assure you that everyone who was in those battles was convinced they were fighting to save Australia. The Battle of Milne Bay, or the Battle of Raibi, known by the Japanese, was the first major victory for the Allies against the Japanese on land. Let me set the stage. Milne Bay was not just another outpost, but a constructed airbase, a major one, for the coming months of reconnaissance and bombing runs, but building it was difficult due to swamping terrain. Japan wanted the base. Their intel said the base was guarded by a small force of about two companies. By late August, two months after the intel, Japan sent around 2,000 men with support from the Navy to capture the base, but the Allies knew they were coming. Allied codebreakers decrypted Japanese messages of the attack and passed it on. The troops, or more likely the officers, knew an attack was going to happen soon, so they got to work and dug in. Not only was the base built, but was reinforced with several battalions from the AIF, the RAAF, and supported by an anti-air regiment, an anti-tank regiment, an engineer regiment, and an artillery battalion ready to greet the Japanese. The new commander, Australian Lieutenant General Cyril Albert Clouds, he was stationed for four days until the battle began. He and most of the troops knew the consequences if Japan took the base. Japan could bomb further into Australian territory and another foothold in New Guinea. Now, it's unclear if or when Japan knew how many men were actually in Milne Bay, but they had their orders. On the 25th of August, 1942, the Japanese troops landed north of Milne Bay and attacked. The battle has begun. The battle itself could be summed up by each week. The first week, Japan attacking while the Australians defend the line, while the RAAF attack enemy troops, supplies, and logistics. The RAAF had air superiority due to many of the Japanese fighters destroyed before the battle took place, thanks to Allied intelligence. Though Japan had two light tanks, they were marooned in less than a week. The second week was a number of counterattacks by the AIF while supported in the air. General Close didn't want to use the full reserve in case the Japanese tried to sneak, attack, or sabotage the airbase. Though there were troops that were inexperienced and would serve much better in guarding the base, which was important as allies can't afford any setbacks. During enemy encounters ranging from ambush parties to snipers, Japanese troops tried to trick Australian troops into a trap by playing dead. Due to this, Australian troops bayoneted or shot any Japanese soldiers dead or playing dead. The battle ended on the 7th of September, when Japan withdrew last night at sea. There were still some skirmishes, but the worst was over. Australia had lost 167 killed or missing and 206 wounded. Japan had lost 625 men and 311 wounded. Also 14 men from the United States Coast Artillery Battalion died. No prisoners were taken. The victory was a huge morale boost to the Australian troops. As the Allies saw first they can beat Japan, much credit should go to the codebreakers alongside the troops. During the advancement, the troops discovered something horrible. 36 Australian troops murdered by bayonet or beheading. 60 civilians were also murdered in a similar way. This was the first Japanese war crime discovered by Australian soldiers. This infuriated the troops, even officers. Realizing what the Japanese had done, knowing a similar fate is happening to the troops that surrendered in Singapore and Malaya. After this battle, Australian troops, knowing the tactics and atrocities Japan had and will commit, wouldn't take any Japanese prisoners until the war had ended. I think this quote sums it up best by Sergeant Arthur Trail during the battle. Our policy was to watch any apparent dead, shoot at the slightest sign of life and stab with bayonet even the ones who were apparent to be rotten. It was all out from then on, neither side showing any quarter, and no prisoners were taken. This is Riz of Australian History. Thank you for watching to the end of the video. I tend to upload within three weeks. If you like what you see, 
click on the Battle of Brisbane, Australia and America's first fight. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button, it always brings a smile to my face.